Thank you for joining me. I'm Tracy and this is a DIY channel where we take pre-owned items and turn them into one-of-a-kind purses, clothing, and accessories. And today I'm going to do something pretty simple. I'm going to take this oversized men's shirt. It's way long, way big, and I'm just going to customize it a little bit so that it looks cute with all my jeans that I have embellished and patched and things like that. Now, this shirt says 18-35 big, I believe. I don't really know what that means, but I do know it's big on me. And I am going to hem the bottom. I'm going to do a curved hem and I'll show you how I've done it and it has never failed me. But first, I need to cut a high-low design. Now, I'm going to cut it high in the front, let it come down on the side, and I'm going to cut it high in the back. Uh, you also can do just high in the front. I do that a lot, and I've also done it the way I'm going to show you. Now, I have a video for this shirt. I'll put the link in my description if you want to know how to just do the front. But the first thing I need to do is get my pins and I need to mark where I want the highest point in the front and back to be. Okay, so I marked it with a pen. I looked in the mirror and I put one pin here. I want to make sure it's going to be below my waistline. I don't want a belly shirt. And then on the back, I decided right here. Now I'm marking it exactly as I want it. And then when I cut it, I will add three quarters of an inch is what it technically should be. I usually add an inch just for to have room for air. Now I have my shirt laid out on my table and I have the front side up and this is where my pin is. Now I'm going to take my pin and move it down one inch and then I'm going to take the front open side. I'm going to line those up and lay it sideways. And I'm going to line the bottom up perfectly. Okay, so I have my pin here and I have a pin here. And the reason I have that, I could have marked it with something, but I really don't want to get anything on the shirt. So I used a pin to mark it. I measured, here's the side seam. I measured over from the side seam three and a half inches and stuck a pin in it. Now I'm going to cut out a curve from this pin to this pin. And when I get here, so I'll start here, I want it to curve, but when I get to that pin, I'll try to smooth it out so I have a rounded corner right there. Whoops. which requires removing my pin so that it's nice and smooth. Now I have the front done and now I want to do the back. So I'm going to the back, I have the pin there, and I'm going to line up this bottom perfectly. And then I'm going to take this pin and move it down one inch. And then I will go to this side seam and three and a half inches from the side seam, I'm going to stick my pin. Now I'm going to cut a curve the same way and smooth it out when I get to that pin. Just like that. Okay, so now this is what I have. Shorter in front, longer on the sides, shorter, long, high, low in front and back. Now it's time to hem it. And this is going to be the easiest hemming on a curve. And there are lots of ways to do it, but this requires no pressing unless you wanna press it when you're all done. 
no pressing, no pinning, no measuring. It does require one extra row of stitching that you wouldn't normally do, but it's still faster, I feel, than measuring, pinning, and all of that. So let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna do something quick here. Okay, do you see how this kind of comes to a little point right there? I'm going to smooth this out a little better and cut off that point. And I'm going to do that on both sides. It's just bugging me. <laughs> so, this comes to a little point. This one's not so bad. I'm just going to smooth it out and round it a little better. Okay, I'm going to do three rows of stitching. And the first one, I'm not folding anything over at all. I am going to use white thread and a simple straight stitch and I'm going to start at one, this is the buttonhole side, and I am just going to run a stitch along the entire bottom, and I'm going to line the edge of my shirt with the side of my presser foot, and just run a stitch from one end, oops, to the other. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so there's that stitch line. And now I want to fold it and stitch it. And I am going to fold it. All this is done on the inside of the shirt, by the way. I'm sure you figured that, but. Okay, so now I'm going to fold it to where I just see that stitch line and I am going to put it underneath my needle and I am going to sew close to the edge, as close to the edge as I can. And I will just keep folding that where I barely see, whoops, I missed my shirt, where I barely see that stitch line that I just made. That is going to be my guide. I better slow down. I'm kind of missing my shirt. Okay, here's what the folded over once looks like. I have that row all done. Now I'm folding it over one more time to make a nice finished edge. And so, same thing. Here's my stitch line. I'm folding it over to where I can just see it, and I'm going to stay very close to the, see my camera's in the way, I can't see very good. I'm going to stay very close to the edge over here and just finish that last row of stitching. Okay, it's all done. There's the outside, there's the underneath side, everything nice and finished. Okay, here it is all done. I double rolled the sleeve and made a big chunky cuff. And I've done this with the dress too. And if you do kind of a sheer dress, I've done it with a real flowy dress. Just make sure your tension on your machine set to a low number. And that opens up a world of possibilities. Maybe you see a dress at the thrift store that, oh, I can never wear that, it's too short. Crop it and do a high-low design and make a top. So unfortunately, these pants I don't have a video for. It was removed because of a copyright accusation. I thank you so, so much for watching.